It's sort of a running joke these days that AEW has become the modern day TNA as far as being a likely destination for ex WWE stars. And while it's true that many of Vince McMahon's former playthings do end up working for Tony Khan, it's also true that AEW have plenty of their own homegrown stars and have routinely managed to secure talents that may have had tryouts with WWE but didn't sign. Either because WWE didn't want them at the time, or because the wrestlers themselves wanted to be all elite in instead. I'm Adam Pacitti from Cultaholic Wrestling and these are 10 AEW stars who had WWE tryouts but didn't sign. Join us. Number 10. Eddie Kingston Eddie Kingston is by no means what WWE traditionally looks for in a new recruit. He doesn't have the bodybuilder physique, and when he had his tryout in 2016, he was already on the losing side of 30. The Mad King got a look in at the Performance Center thanks to his longtime friend Jimmy Jacobs, who was then working as a writer for WWE. He remarked later that he felt as though the class of recruits that he was in was designed more to get people on board for the upcoming Mae Young Classic, as it was disproportionately female. Things didn't go well for Eddie either, as he was asked to record an on-camera promo following a conditioning drill and made the mistake of mentioning how it was hard for him, even as someone who had been stabbed and shot at. Apparently openly discussing guns and knives is a WWE promo no-no, who knew? Well, Kingston knew his chances of getting signed were slim to none after a promo talking about Tupac and Santa Claus left two WWE writers observing the promo class completely bewildered. Sounds like a good promo. Number 9. Ricky Starks Ricky Starks had his first WWE enhancement match all the way back in 2012, just a year after he started wrestling. A lifelong fan who had wanted to be a sports entertainer all his life, Starks felt like he was going to get his big break after putting over Jinder Mahal, getting put through a table by Ryback, and cutting a promo on Kane prior to getting demolished by the Big Red Machine. He then had several tryouts at the PC and later said that he felt he did well in the promo class, especially against athletes from other walks of life that didn't know much about the business. But nothing ever came of it, and after being in a bit of a limbo stage for a while, Ricky knew he would have to explain or his options elsewhere. As someone who grew up watching WWE and whose major goal it was to get signed there full time, not getting a call back was a blow. Shortly after wrestling Cody Rhodes on AEW TV, however, someone from WWE did call and said that they wanted to bring him in. Hmm. While Starks entertained the idea, he decided to put pen to paper with Tony Khan instead. Number 8. Satnam Singh Vince McMahon likes giants. I don't think I'm telling any tall tales when I say that, and I don't think I'm lying when I say he would probably sell Shane McMahon to get a giant who could appeal to a major overseas market. Former NBA player Satnam Singh was invited to the Performance Center for a workout in 2017, with WWE even uploading footage of the Indian-born athlete practicing to their social media channels. Described as one in a billion, Singh was obviously somebody that WWE would have liked to have used, as he had all the tools to become the next Great Khali. But you know, the Great Khali with coordination and two functioning knees. Satnam considered his options, but chose AEW over WWE for a simple reason. Though he enjoyed the WWE experience and felt like he could do great things there, he knew he would stand out more in AEW, where he would be the first Indian wrestler on a roster that isn't exactly overflowing with seven footers. His AEW journey has really only just begun, but there's no doubting he feels more unique there than he would in the other place. Number 7. Penelope Ford when WWE shared a photo of the potential signees taking part in their December 2018 tryout, indie wrestling fans were quick to point out Penelope Ford in the lineup. The bad girl was in the same group that produced Cal Von Wagner Bloom, but she herself did not end up signing with the company. Instead, just weeks later, it was revealed that Penelope Ford had signed with All Elite Wrestling. Ford had been part of the All In pay-per-view, accompanying her then-boyfriend Joey Janela for his match against Adam Page, so she must have been at least on Cody and Co's radar. Whether or not she knew too much about AEW or had signed a contract prior to going to the Performance Center is unknown, but it seems unlikely she would purposely do something to irk her new employer. Not much has come out about Ford's WWE tryout experience, but either the company passed on her or she passed on their offer. Either way, Penelope has been around since AEW's inception, and they even paid for her wedding, so 
Well, good for her. Number 6. Sammy Guevara Sammy Guevara was certainly known to WWE brass, having done rosebud duty during the Adam Rose era of awesomeness, and competed in a tag team dark match against Primo and Epico. His performance in that match, which saw him bust out the always impressive 630, landed him a subsequent tryout at the PC, where he found himself in the same class as his future colleague Ricky Starks. Sammy knew the tryout would be difficult, especially when it came to cardiovascular conditioning, so he prepared in earnest in order to avoid blowing up. Guevara was already a wrestler, and like many, his dream was to make it to WWE, but his opinion of that dream and of the company itself changed during the course of his audition. As he told it on Talk as Jericho, he felt as though there was a bias against wrestlers or those whose dream it was to actually become a WWE star. In his opinion, athletes and models received better treatment, while the wrestlers there were looked down upon. The Spanish god also claimed that the atmosphere would be nice and chill until the cameras turned on, at which point the coaches turned nasty. Number 5. Jade Cargill I can't imagine Vince McMahon has many regrets in life. Oh. Wait, but I would wager one of the things that keeps him up at night, not that he sleeps, is letting Jade Cargill slip through his fingers. The total package really is all that and then some, possessing a tremendous look, superior athleticism, and a natural charisma and star presence. She basically has everything you can't teach, and WWE wanted her bad following her 2019 tryout, but they were concerned with just how much Cargill needed or, as it turns out, didn't need them. The undefeated TBS champion was far from hard up and didn't want to be just another number in the system. WWE also had reservations about how she would handle the travel schedule given that she had a young daughter, even though Jade assured them that she knew what it all entailed. In the end, she opted against signing the 100-page contract they sent her, continued training at her own pace on the advice of Mark Henry, and said yes when Tony Khan came a-knocking. Number 4. Anthony Bowens Anthony Bowens' WWE experience was a far from positive one as he chased a contract for an age while being ghosted and even suffered a scary injury while doing job duty on an episode of NXT. His first tryout came at the 2015 Arnold Classic, with another following at the Performance Center a year later. In conjunction with the PC camp, Bowens got a shot on TV, teaming with another hopeful to take on the Authors of Pain. Unfortunately, the acclaimed member got knocked out in a nasty situation when his partner was powerbombed directly onto his face. He had been told that he was in line to get signed in 2017, but didn't hear anything for three years. And would you believe it, right after appearing on AEW's YouTube show Dark, Bowens received a phone call from somebody in WWE offering him a contract to start with NXT. However, after being ignored for so long and feeling unconvinced by the offer, Anthony decided to reject the in favor of AEW, where he signed a five-year deal. Number 3. The Young Bucks After they became independent wrestling's hottest commodity and prior to helping start AEW, the Young Bucks were strongly courted by WWE. Matt and Nick Jackson had done extra work in the past, including a parody of D-Generation X, but they showed up at their tryout, which was basically just some pre-show ring work, not exactly seeking full-time employment. The brothers had actually already agreed to sign with Ring of Honor, but went to the Raw tape anyway to see what it would be like and to generate some buzz ahead of their imminent arrival in ROH. Before doors opened, they apparently had a barn burner of a bout with the Usos, talk about your contemporary dream match there, and would have likely been approached about getting signed had William Regal, who was on his first day on the job, not erroneously believed that they were still in their teens. Also of note from their tryout was the big drama that came out afterwards about them not shaking Booker T's hand backstage, which had the five-time WC W champion Spinner Rooneying in rage until they squashed the beef years later. Number 2. Wardlow Wardlow's WWE tryout experience was so disheartening that it almost resulted in him quitting the business, and what a travesty that would have been. The story of his tryout is a familiar one by now, as he showed up in great shape and full of passion for the business. Hell, he even observed the WWE dress code and wore a suit, something he later said he was alone in doing. In Wardlow's own words, he smoked the tryout and was so sure that he would be offered a deal that he sold his motorcycle and home in order to put all his money and energy into moving to Florida. Ultimately though, he was passed over for others who, according to him, had no knowledge of wrestling and claimed to not even like it. He was crushed, but he didn't stop working and ended up 
up personally training with WWE legend Kurt Angle as the Hall of Famer was preparing for his final couple of matches. The Olympic gold medalist assured Wardlow that it was not a matter of if, but when, as far as a WWE opportunity went, but Wardlow didn't fancy waiting and the rest is history. Number 1. Powerhouse Hobbs Simply take one look at Powerhouse Hobbs and you will see a performer that has big time written all over him. How did WWE not snap him up? A fan of the business since he was a kid, Hobbs did the indie thing and paid his dues for seven years before he got his first WWE tryout, which saw him in the same class as Eddie Kingston and former AEW star Big Swole and led to a dark match against Baron Corbin. He'd gone into great shape before the tryout and cut an emotional promo about his older brother who had been killed by gunfire years earlier, which impressed William Regal. Two months later, he received an email saying WWE didn't have anything for him right now, but they would continue to monitor him going forward. Fast forward to immediately after his standout match with Darby Allin on Dynamite and WWE had changed their tune on Hobbs, reaching out to say that they were very much interested in him. Refusing to take the carrot, the Team Taz member told WWE in no uncertain terms what he thought of their sudden U-turn and decided to take his chances with AEW instead. 